Let's tackle this grid problem from the 2024 AMC 8. Min enters the numbers from 1 to 81 in a 9 by 9 grid in some order. She calculates the product of the numbers in each row and column, and we're asked to find the least number of rows and columns that have a product divisible by 3. The first thing to notice here is if there's even one number in a row or column that's a multiple of 3, then the entire row or column will also be a multiple of 3 because a multiple of 3 times any other number is just going to be a multiple of 3. So now the question becomes from 1 to 81, how many multiples of 3 are there? Well, that's simple. That's just 81 divided by 3. So there's 27 multiples of 3 from 1 to 81. And if you want to minimize the number of rows or columns that could have a product, hmm, what should we do? Well, the idea is we have a number that's a multiple of three in a row. Let's just, let's just say we put uh, 27 here, right? Now, this, this row is anyways going to be one of the rows. And if we're trying to minimize, or one of the columns, and if we're trying to minimize the total number of columns, then maybe we should also put some more multiples of 3 in this same row. Because then, rather than occupying two separate columns, like 18 for example, or rather than now having two separate columns that are products of multiple of 3, we can just combine them whoops, into one column. Now, effectively, only one column, only one column will have a product that's a multiple of 3. But then again, we still have two rows, right? So it's kind of you kind of want to you kind of want to squish all the multiples of threes together. So in some way, you can think about this problem as just finding where which square should have a multiple of three, such that there's the least number of rows or columns that have any squares in them, any sh shaded squares in them. So let's reformulate the problem like that. Let's shade a square if it's a multiple of three. And then we want to minimize the number of rows and columns that have a shaded square, right? That's basically the same thing here. Because if it has one shaded square, then its product will be a multiple of 3. So we have to put 27 shaded squares. What are some examples of some configurations we can think of? Again, we want to squish it out. So one way maybe is you have three rows of 9, right? And that's reasonable, right? Three rows of 9, we shade it all in, right? Like some, something like that. Let's make it that bigger. So we put basically that means we put all the multiples of three in these shaded squares. So now what would be our answer in this case? We have three columns that are shaded, fully shaded, and we have nine rows that are fully shaded. So that gets a total of 12. But can we do better? Can any of these other smaller choices possibly work? So this is like a very, it's 9 by 3, right? And you probably know that generally, let's say you have like a rectangle. Effectively, we're trying to minimize the perimeter, right? And generally, let's say you have a fixed area of this rectangle, right? It's a standard geometry question. Let's say the area of this rectangle is fixed. And let's say you're trying to minimize the sum of these two side lengths. What should you do? You should make it a square, right? Because a square is the most compact. Because like a, this long rectangle can fit in a square, the same area. But overall, this, this square will have a smaller perimeter than the long rectangle because of the fact that it's more spread out, right? For example, if we have something like, let's say, 2 and 50, Oh, I know it's not to scale, versus 10 by 10. You know, they both have the same area, but this rectangle has a sum 2 plus 50, 52. And this one has a sum 10 plus 10, 20. It's much smaller, even though they have the same area, because one is squished and the other one is, you know, in more of a square shaped. So this is, again, a long rectangle here, so it produces a very large sum of the length and the width. So if we want to make it smaller, naturally, we want to make our shaded squares in a more square-like configuration. So let's see if we can do that. So 3 by 9, okay, we know 12 can work, but the question is, can we do better? So 
let's say we're trying to, let's see if we can do 11, right? So 11, 11 rows and columns total, what's something we can think of? So what if we put them in a 5 by 6 rectangle? Notice that the 5 by 6 rectangle can hold up to 30 squares, but we only need 27 of them. So really we have three squares that we can leave for free, right? We can just leave three of the squares out. But the, the, the thing is, this does work, right? Because all 27 of these shaded squares fit in these five, in these five, five, five rows and six columns. So we found a construction for 11 by fitting in a five by six rectangle configuration. And even though it might be a little weird, like why are we leaving the squares out? Well, that's okay, right? Because we're, we're just trying to find the number of rows and columns that it can fit in. It does not necessarily have to occupy every square in, in that configuration. So 11, we found a construction for 11. So now is the question is, can we do 10 or better? Let's think about 10 for a minute. What's the maximum number of squares that 10 total rows and columns can provide. So basically that question is, let me reformulate it in terms of these rectangles. Let's say the sum of the length and the width of the rectangle is 10, right? That's what it means by 10 rows and columns being occupied in our thing, right? What is the maximum area you could get? Well, five and five, that's the best case scenario, right? Five and five, because anything else like two and eight will produce an area that's smaller. So 25 is the maximum number of squares or area, they're the same here, that a five by five, that a total of 10 rows and columns can provide. But we have 27. So if the maximum number of squares that 10 rows and columns can, you know, 10 rows and columns can have, 10 total rows and columns can have is 25, and we have 27, then clearly this is not possible. And the same for, goes for anything smaller because the maximum number of squares for a total of nine rows and columns and a total of eight rows and columns is even smaller. So therefore, our answer is 11. And this is quite a tricky problem in my opinion, especially for number 16. So let's just quickly recap the key steps here. So the key idea is we only care about the number of multiples of three. And this problem is the equivalent to saying we want to place 27 of these squares, we want to make them shaded, and we want to find out the configuration, such basically the least number of rows and columns that the shaded squares can occupy. And we found 12 work by a 3 by 9 configuration, then we realized 11, okay, 11 can hold, 11 total rows and columns can hold 30 squares, and we have 27. So 27 shaded squares fit in our 5 by, 7, 5 by 6 configuration of 30 squares. And then we found out that anything 10 or less won't work because 10, the maximum number of squares they can have with 10 total rows and columns is 25. And we have 27 squares that we have to shade in. So then we realize, okay, 10 doesn't work, 9 doesn't work, and 8 doesn't work. So therefore, we know, okay, 11 has to be our answer here. Hope you enjoyed.